Okay, as promised, um, this is how to apply um, noise reduction, and I'm going to choose one particular effect that we're going to use. I do have a, I've got a fan going back there, um, and it is bleeding into this mic right here. But first of all, um, I'm just going to go through the, the basics again of creating a multi-track session. Uh, oh, let me turn on my cursor so you can see it. There we go. Cursor Pro. Enable Cursor Pro. Yeah, good. Okay. So up here in multi-track, I'm going to create a new session, and I'll call this Noise Reduction. And I'm going to put it in Downloads. And I'm going to keep my settings the way we always do, 44100, 16 bits and mono, ba 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 ba. And then I have my multi-track session here. Now, again, to record directly into Audition, I need to make sure that Audition sees this microphone as the input source. So if I go up here to Adobe Audition settings, right there, and I go to audio hardware, boom. Now I can see what is my input. And I have my input set as the solo, Scarlett Solo USB. What that is, is sitting right there on my desk is an audio interface. And this microphone is plugged into it. And it's that is changing this analog signal to a digital signal. Go into my Mac. You got it. And my Mac is happy because it's getting a digital signal. So that's why I've chosen this. There are many other choices here, but I want that because it's this microphone. Now, the output could be my monitors, my studio monitors, could be my headphones, it could be whatever I want it to be. However, I am using Ecamm Live to record this uh, tutorial. So I am sending the audio from here to the Ecamm Live program, and that's why I have Ecamm Live audio app set. So I'm going to hit OK. Now, to activate this track to be recorded, I have to hit the little R button here. So now you can see signal coming in to this track. And if I go down here and hit the record button, I will start recording. Let's do that. And it's always good practice to, especially if you have an offending noise in your environment, to, first of all, try to eliminate it if you can. I could go over there and shut that off. But let's pretend I cannot change this noise. I, I can't manipulate it. I can't shut it off. It's always good practice to get 10 seconds of just the room ambient noise and or the, inf the offending noise. So let's go 10 seconds. Okay, and when we eliminate this offending noise, we want to make sure that it doesn't impact my voice. Uh, we want to make sure it impacts my voice as little as possible because there are frequencies in my voice. I have a vocal range. I have a, there's a frequency spectrum to my voice. And when we pull those frequencies out of that fan, they're also going to be pulled out of my voice. So... Let's see what we can do here. I am going to stop recording right now. Okay. Now, I'm going to go turn that off. Because if we were editing, we would not necessarily be in the same space. We might be somewhere else. We might be in our studio. So let's take a listen. Yep, there it is. And it's always good practice to, especially if you have an offending noise in your environment, to, first of all, it's horrible. Uh, it's really present. And it's always good practice. So I'm going to show you an effect here, and we're going to do it right here in multi-track. 
And I'm in the effects rack down here. I'm on this track right here because I've got it selected. And that's why this bar turned lit up to its color. And I'm going to go here to uh, slot number one. And I'm going to go to noise reduction and restoration. But I'm going to choose the second one in the list, which is adaptive noise reduction. So what this does is it samples that noise. That's why we get 10 seconds. And it, it finds those frequencies and eliminates those frequencies. So um, I'm going to click out of there just for a sec because I think I'm, oops, I'm going to go to this section here where, where I did the 10 seconds of silence on purpose. And you can see right there, my chair squeaked. So I don't want that. I actually do not want that right there, that little dot because I don't want that frequency removed. All right, so I'm going to select like this selection here. And by the way, it's going to loop. You see this, my playhead looping? That's because down here, I have this little blue arrow toggled on. Loop, playback. Okay, so I'm going to now go back to effects rack, go into slot number one, and go to noise reduction and choose adaptive noise reduction. And I'm getting this pop up and it's saying the selected effect may not be suitable for real time playback because it is either CPU intensive or high latency. This effect that we're doing is very sophisticated and takes a lot of computer power to perform it. So if this, sometimes when I do this to a really long file, I don't hear it in playback, but it will impact the final file going out. We're going to hear it here because this is a very short track. So I'm going to say yes, that's okay. And now I'm uh, presented with granular control, always granular control. This can be very, very confusing. Um, there's, there isn't a, a ton to do here. Uh, but we do have the ability to, uh, by decibel, decide how many decibels we want to reduce the noise by. Um, we can mess with these settings. I encourage you to mess with them because you can play this. There it goes. It went away. Not completely. But you can play with these uh, settings here and listen to the difference in real time. That's why I like having this loop feature here. So I'm going to toggle it off and we're going to hear it come back. There it is. There it is. Now, I'm going to increase the uh, reduce noise by button. And now it's getting even quieter. It's still there, but it's almost gone. If you have your headphones on, you, you may still hear it. I can't, I don't seem to be able to get, get, completely eliminated but and if I go back down to zero you can hear it again so all right let's keep it at 20 where it w defaulted to and let's listen to my voice now and see what's happened to my voice so I'm moving the playhead to where I'm speaking it's always good practice to get 10 seconds of just the room ambient noise and or the inf the offending noise. So let's go 10 seconds. So let's go. Okay. And when we eliminate this offending noise, we want to make sure that it doesn't impact my voice. Uh, we want to make sure it does. It is impacting my okay. voice. Okay. And when we eliminate this offending, and you can hear when I hit the space bar to play to run the playhead, you can hear the offending noise and then it goes away. And that's that message that we got in the beginning. It may not work in real time. Okay. And when we eliminate this offending noise, we want to make sure that it doesn't impact my voice. Okay, so while I am listening to my voice, when we eliminate this offending noise, I'm going to manipulate the controls here, the granular controls in the effect. We want to make sure that it doesn't 
impact my voice. Uh, we want to make sure it impacts my voice as little as possible because there are frequencies in my voice. I have a vocal range. I have a, there's a frequency spectrum to my voice. And when we pull those frequencies out of that fan, that makes it also going to be pulled out of my voice. Very wonky. So let's see what we can do here. I am going to stop recording right now. Okay, so there's some what's what are called artifacts. Because the noise reduction is applied to the fan, but it is also applied to my to anything on this track. So it's applying to my my voice and this the frequency spectrum of my voice. It's creating what what are called artifacts and it's these little janky blemishes. So changing this uh, noisiness uh, control did uh, um, take the, uh, the the impact of the effect away greatly. So this has to remain somewhere around 40. Range. I have a, there's a frequency spectrum to my voice. And when we pull those frequencies out of that fan, they're also going to be pulled out of my voice. So I can still hear those artifacts. And they, again, they're just very minor. You, you will get used to once your ears get attuned to editing, you will hear these. They're very subtle, but they are there. And when we pull those frequencies out of that fan, they're also going to be pulled out of my voice. So let's see what we can do here. I am going to stop recording right now. And there's a little bit of that fan noise just around those words too, right there, right now so now okay so but we have we have at least applied the effect this is really egregious this uh, is loud and it's glaring and if i were asked to record in an environment like this i wouldn't do it so if this were you know, weren't as offending or weren't as loud or was in the other room, this effect probably would have worked much better. But I hope you get a sense of conceptually how to apply a noise reduction using adaptive noise reduction. There are some other methods. We'll go over them in class, but this is a good, um, this is a good skill to have. So I hope that helps.